All right, so let's look at uh, doing some integrals, uh, finding some antiderivatives using uh, partial fractions. <clears throat> now, so here's some things that you have to look for. Uh, the first one, uh, if it's an improper, if it's improper, then that means if the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator, then you need to divide the, de the denominator into the numerator and then you can proceed with the partial fractions. <clears throat> uh, and then if you don't have any of that or you know even if you do you may want you want to try to factor the denominators okay you completely factor them uh, you're either going to have linear or quadratic uh, and this this ax squared plus bx plus c to the n, that's that you have to make sure that this cannot be factored anymore. That's what this means where ax squared plus bx plus c to the n is irreducible. That means it won't factor anymore. <clears throat> and then you could have, and then the linear factors, uh, your linear factors would be px plus q to the m. You see how the, the largest exponent in here is a 1. <clears throat> And then you have quadratic factors where you see the exponent here is a 2. And this right here just tells you how to write it out. Uh, so whatever this exponent is, you're going to have you're going to have that many. You would you would write it as a1 over px plus q to the first plus a2 over px plus q to the second plus and then a3 over px plus q to the third and so on all the way until you get to the m here and then the same thing would apply for the quadratic except for in the numerator it would be the b1x plus c1 okay <clears throat> and you just keep doing that until you have you know until the n times alright so let's take a look at our first example. Alright, so we have <coughs> 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6 dx. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is we need to take this denominator here and factor it. So I have x squared minus 5x plus 6 and then if I factor that I get x minus 3 times x minus 2. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so now I can I can write one over x squared minus five x plus six is equal to. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna break this up. See, here's each one of my linear factors. So that's gonna be a over this x minus three plus, and then instead of doing a one and a two and so on. I'm going to use a and b, that's what we commonly use, over x minus 2. <clears throat> Alright, so now what I need to do is I need to multiply each one of these terms by the common denominator. And the common denominator is x minus 3 times x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply everything by x minus 3 times x minus 2. And so when I multiply this common denominator to this, this cancels out, and this would cancel out, and so I would be left with 1 equals. And then when I multiply it to this, the x minus 3 cancels, so I'm left with a times x minus 2 plus, and then when I multiply it to this term, the x minus 2's cancel out, so I'm left with b times x minus 3. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to figure out what A and B are. So the way that we can do that is we can say, I'm going to do this in a different color, we can say let X equal 3. And the reason I chose the 3 is because it's going to make this go to 0. And so this whole term here is going to go out and I'll be just left I'll be left with just my a 
Okay, and then 3 minus 2 is 1, so I'd be left with A, and that way I could solve for A. And so <clears throat> I'm going to have 1 equals A times 3 minus 2 plus B times 3 minus 3. <clears throat> and so I'm left with 1 equals, and then that's 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 times A is A. And then 3 minus 3 is 0, and 0 times B is 0. So I'm just left with A equals 1. So I have A equals 1. Now I know what A is. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let X equal 2. And what that's going to do is that's going to make this go out to 0, and I'll be able to solve for B. So let's plug the 2 in. So I get 1 equals, and then that's going to be A times 2 minus 2 plus B times 2 minus 3. And that's going to leave me 1 equals. This term's going to go to 0. And then 2 times negative, uh, 2, I'm sorry, not 2 times, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And negative 1 times b is negative b. So this tells me that b equals negative 1. So now I have b and I have a. a is 1 and b is negative 1. So what I'll do is I can replace the a here with a 1 and the b with a negative 1. All right. So let's plug that in. So I get so I get 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals, and then remember, a is 1, so that's 1 over, and then let's see, that's going to be x minus 3, okay, over x minus 3 plus negative 1 over and then x minus 2. <clears throat> so this is going to give me 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 1 over x minus 3 and then I'm going to just all I'm doing here from this step to this step is changing it to minus 1 over x minus 2. <clears throat> Alright so now that I've shown this is equal to this, I can go ahead and integrate it. So I got I have the integral of 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6 dx is equal to the integral of 1 over x minus 3 minus 1 over x minus 2 dx. <coughs> so this is going to give me, so when I integrate, I can integrate each one of these. Now, this you should know how to integrate. This is going to be what? <clears throat> this is natural log, right? So it's going to be <clears throat> the natural log, absolute value, x minus 3, minus, and then this one is going to integrate into the natural log of x minus 2, natural log x minus 2 and then uh, plus c <clears throat> and I guess it's okay if you leave your answer like this but what we can do is we can simplify it a little more see since this is split up with subtraction the logarithms come together so that's the natural log of x minus 3 over x minus 2 remember subtraction comes together as division and if it was addition, it would come together as uh, multiplication uh, and plus C. And so this would be our final answer. So remember, <clears throat> what you're doing here is once you get once you get to this point right here. No, I'm sorry. Once you get to this point right here. All you're doing is you're going to let x equal whatever it takes to make this 0 and then let x equal whatever it takes to make this 0. 
okay and you don't have to do it in this order you could have let x equal 2 first and then let x equal 3 second that makes no difference but uh, hopefully this videos helped this is uh, example one I plan on putting some more up with the for the partial fractions uh, hope you liked it and check out my other videos thanks